Let's go ahead and take a look at week 10, example 4. In this example, we're looking to identify the general solution to the equation cosine of x equals negative 1 half. We can verbalize this uh, equation alternatively as saying, what angles will result in a width of negative 1 half on our unit circle? Uh, as we've seen this semester, it turns out that there's actually an infinite number of solutions to this equation. And so when we think of our general solutions, we're trying to represent all of those infinite number of solutions in one concise statement if possible. But before we start thinking about the fact that there's an infinite number of these solutions, let's just take a look at our unit circle and think to ourselves, what angles within one full revolution are going to represent the locations where we experience a width of negative one half? In our unit circle, if I would like to arrive at a width of negative one half, I'm picturing these are the two angles that will result in a cosine value of negative one half. I recognize these as 120 degrees and 240 degrees. So within the interval 0 to 360, these would be my only two solutions. However, since we're looking for a general solution here, we would like to know all possible angles, not just the ones within 0 to 360. These are certainly going to be our base cases from which we'd like to work, but we'd like to account for all the rest of our solutions as well. So again, we're looking for angles that we have named x that are going to result in us landing at either of these two locations here. It seems to me that the first solution that I'd like to state for x is 120 degrees. But what I know is that I could do any number of additional laps around this circle. As long as I still land at this angle, I'll have a cosine value of negative a half. What I know I can do here is since cosine has a period of 360 degrees, I know that I can add an additional 360 any number of times to arrive at a new solution. I could do it again. And this should also be a solution. This says take two laps, then go 120 degrees further. We should again land at that spot. We should continue to be adding these 360s for as long as we want. The point is we would like to represent one equation that's going to indicate all of these possible solutions to us. So I'm going to write this slightly differently. Rather than just writing out addition of 360 an unknown number of times, let's add 360 k times, an unknown number of times here. I'm going to give a little bit more detail as to what k is, but let's make a similar statement here for our other piece of our solution. The other angles that I know are going to result in us landing one half unit to the left of the origin on our unit circle are based off of this 240 degree angle here. So the other piece to my solution should say 240 degrees is a solution. I also know that I can get any angle that's coterminal with 240 degrees to also be a solution. And so here it seems like we could also add 360 any number of times. So the final thing that I'd like to say about these two pieces of general solution here is that let me explain my notation here a little bit. What I'm suggesting here is that K that little lowercase e there says is an element of, which means it's contained in a set. What set is it contained in? Well, this z with two sticks on it is our set of integers. So this says to me, this is just my fancy math formatting for saying where k is an integer. k is an element of the set of the integers here. So this says to me that I can add or subtract, remember integers can be positive or negative, I can add or subtract 360 any number of times that I want relative to a starting angle of 120, and all of these should provide our solutions that are going to land us at a cosine value of negative a half on the unit circle. So for my final answer here, I will state both of my equations as well as my general statement about k. Pretty typically in this context, this is an implied statement right here. These types of statements come up often enough in trigonometry that it's often expected that the uh, user or receiver of this information understands that k is intended to be an integer here. Uh, so if you don't write this, I'm okay with that. But it is understand, uh, important that you understand what you're doing when you use this k term here. Uh, so very often k is used to indicate any number of additional revolutions. This k is handling all of our coterminal angles for us, any number of additional revolutions uh, that land us at the same locations as 120 and 240.